Hey guys, Families of the Mafia, it's coming out Thursday the 15th on MTV. It's going to be really, really good. I saw some of the first cuts, and uh, I think it's very entertaining. You're going to love it. Check it out. I grew up, I was in the Rampers. This guy, Louis Bopp, was in the Rampers. Tough guy. He had a brother, Vinny Governero, I believe their last one name was, but he was called Vinny Mook. Real tough guy. He fought in the ring. I believe he won the Golden Gloves at one point. He was really, really good with his hands, tall, muscular. He was like athletic type of guy. He played ball, baseball, football, you name it. He was good at it. But he was a real rough type of guy with his mouth and whatever. But he could back it up with muscle. One day, matter of fact, I remember, I believe it was near High Tulip. I did a video, I stuck up this place, but High Tulip. It's a Jewish deli in our neighborhood. We used to all go there a lot. And he makes a pass at this woman. He doesn't know, but that woman is, I believe, Nino Gaggi, who was a captain in the Gambino family. It's his sister, I believe it was. Nino sees it. He charges the guy. I believe he had a weapon. I think it was a hammer or something like that or a, or a crowbar or something, whatever, but a weapon. He swings at Vinny. Vinny ducks, as a fighter would do. Comes up with a tremendous blow. Knocks Nino to the ground. Breaks his nose. Gives him a couple of kicks or whatever. And leaves. He had no idea he just did this to a captain. He kind of laid low when people were saying... This Nino guy, he's a made guy. He was more than a made guy, he was a captain. Under him was Roy DeMeo. You all know who Roy DeMeo is, practically a serial killer. He hears what happened to Nino. He's in Nino's camp right away. Kill is on his mind. He don't want to give the guy a beating, he wants to kill him. That's Roy. Nino's nephew, Dominic Montiglio, was the go-between between Nino, he wasn't a made guy, between Nino and Roy DeMeo. The drug money, stolen car ring, all of these things were going back and forth. Dominic was in the military for a while, I believe three years. And he was in special forces. So he was trained to kill in the military. And when you're in special forces, you're in an elite group. So he knew what he was doing. After the beef, they went looking for Vinnie Mook. And they couldn't find him. Then they found him on Bath Avenue and Bay 23rd, where we used to hang out. They saw his car. They knew the car. Dominic, who was a special forces soldier, had a grenade or a bomb or something, and he put it under the car. He gets in the car or halfway in the car. This bomb goes off. If the doors were closed, he would have been dead. But the doors were open. So the bomb exploded up and out those doors instead of just exploding up, he would have been dead. He got hurt, Vinny Mook, but survived. Then he went on the lam. He knew he had a problem. He knew they were looking to kill him. He was gone for about a year or so, and 
one day by Dominic Tiglio's house, I think it was his wife's birthday. Nino was there, a few other guys were there. Somebody came in and said, we just saw a car, Vinny Wu got out, he's back in the neighborhood. He whispered to his wife, he's gotta go somewhere, be right back, and they left. They made a call to Roy DeMeo, who got over there, and they went to 85th Street and 20th Avenue. Sure enough, they found him. When he got out of the car and was walking across the street, they came out, guns blazing. They killed him. Got in the car, took off, went back to Dominic's house. Had some birthday cake, like nothing at all happened. The hit was made. Louis bought my friend and wanted to ramp as he was crushed by it. There was another brother, Arthur Bob. That kid was with Tommy Karate. So they were all hooked up, pretty good, different people, but they were hooked up. Years later, Arthur Bob was killed as well. Tommy Karate and a couple of his guys killed him. It was pretty well known who did it. He was sitting in a house in a meeting. One of the guys got up to go take a piss. But he really didn't have to go take a piss. He went into the bathroom. When he came out, he had a gun. He shot at the bomb. The gun jammed. Arthur Bob jumped through the front window, right through the window, landed on the sidewalk. Started running and staggering up the block. He got to the corner where there was a payphone. Tommy Karate and the two guys came out of the house. They were going to run over to him and just finish what they started. But he collapsed. He collapsed near the phone. And he died. So that family and that story with Vinny Mook and Louis Bopp and Arthur Bopp was an unbelievable story. A lot of people ask me about Vinny Mook. When I was a kid, and we just started going to Bath Avenue, Vinny Moo came over, and he told us to take off. We went there for one of the younger guys, our age, and we didn't go. And we were walking to the schoolyard. He turned around, and he hit me a fucking right hook above my left eye. I still got a scar. It's his scar. He busted my eye wide open. Guys got in the middle of it, but I wanted to continue it. I wanted to go into the schoolyard. I wanted to fight him. I got japped out. This time I wanted to be ready. I couldn't stop the bleeding. When I started the fight, the blood was pouring on, down my face, and we fought. Guys said that it was the longest fight they've ever seen. We fought for 25 minutes straight, blow for blow, shot for shot. No wrestling, no bullshit, just blows. I was a mess. So was he. When the fight was over, nobody won. We were both so fucking tired, exhausted. When they came in, we almost both said, we'll do this again. Nobody won. So many guys who were there from Bath Avenue, some ramp of people, said they never saw a fight like that in their life. I went to a doctor. My eye had to get stitched up. I couldn't stop the bleeding. I cleaned up. 
Everything was wrong. My lip was hanging down. I mean, everything. But he went to a hospital. That's how bad he was fucked up. When I heard that he went to the hospital, it made me feel better. I went to a doctor. It was a fair fight. But I, I started saying, I think I got the best of him. I didn't wind up in a fucking hospital. He did. But we became good friends. And this was before this incident happened with him. He was real close with us. He became real close with me. We became good friends. We would joke with each other. Who was tougher? You slipped the punch there, me, and caught me. That's what did it. <laughs> I would laugh. You japped me out. That's what did that eye. That I'm fighting with one eye. The blow was going in my eye. I couldn't see. So we would break each other's shops. But we remembered we stayed good friends. And it was on Bath Avenue and Bay 23rd Street. There was a police station there. There was a schoolyard across the street. We spent a lot of years there. Louis Bopp, I didn't see him for years and years after. He left with a guy, Allen. This guy would go out of the country and sneak pot back into the country. 15, 1,800, 2,000 pounds. He would buy it in Colombia and go through drugs, uh, uh, jungles and stuff on mules to bring it back. A ballsy guy to do all that shit. And then he would finally smuggle it into the United States and bring it in the neighborhood. Ralph Spiro was alive. Shorty Spiro, I was with Shorty already. And uh, they were pushing on him for money, trying to shake him down. He would give them some, but they wanted more. So he got together with Louis Bopp and a few other guys, and he took off. He wasn't going to pay. He couldn't fight him, so he just took off, and he went to Florida. He had a lot more money than people thought. He opened up two car dealerships. He took Louis Bopp and a few guys with him, and he continued doing pot, and they were heading that pot operation. Years later, Louis Bopp left him and came back to New York. Eddie Lino was a captain in our family, came to me and said, Sammy, I got a guy with me. He's an ex dealer and stuff. He says he knows you real good. I said, who is he? He said, call him Louis Bob. I said, Louis Bob? I grew up with the guy. I, yeah, yeah, I know him good. He said, he knows who killed Arthur Bob. And I think Tommy Karate was already gone or wasn't around, but he knew one of the, the other shooters. He says, he wants to get even I'm telling them, go kill the guy. I want to make sure you, it's nobody you know or anything like that. So I said, I know him. When he comes in to you, tell him to come and see me. And he did. We hugged. We grew up as kids. We did everything as kids together for the longest, longest time. It was really good to see him again. So much turmoil and so many things happened. So I said, you got permission to get even for your brother. That happened years and years ago. Yes, Sammy. And he's a good guy. He told me if I want to get even, do it. I'm on record with him now. I wish you would have came to me, bro. We have so much history together. But Eddie's a good man. He's the same family as me. He's a good man. You would have go, man. He's real tough. Play by the rules, bro. Listen to me. One of them kids, I know him. He's a good kid. 
He wasn't the actual shooter, but he was there. Billy Bright. <sighs> Give him a pass. Why would I do that? I just told you. He's a good kid. We all do fucked up things, bro. He didn't do it on his own. He did it under orders. He was with the guy, just like you're going to do when you get orders. It's a lot, a lot of years ago, bro. Don't start off that way. And I know the kid and like the kid. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm asking you. Think about it. He never till, did kill Billy Bright. Even though he had the okay, he pulled back. I saw him one more time. And uh, he thanked me. He said, I had this hate built up in me. And uh, I felt different after you talked to me. And he didn't do it. Eddie Leno, a short time after that, was killed by these dirty mob cops. And uh, he was alone. He left again. Disappeared. Louis Bob. I never saw him again. Not too long ago, I don't know how many years ago, my daughter did a book. It's quite a few years ago. And she did a book signing. And a little old man looked like an ex-fighter. Pug nose, front nose smashed in, my size, stocky, but an old man. Told my daughter, sign my, bo uh, my book to Louis Bob. He says, you know who I am? My daughter says, no, who are you? He says, tell your father, Louis Bob was here. He says, I'm your father's friend. Not like them other guys, a real friend. My daughter got in touch with me and told me. I think I was in prison still when she told me. I said, you're a good guy. How does he look? She says, a little bit like you, Dad. He's a small little old man. I said, bite your toes. Don't stop calling me an old man. <laughs> but uh, this is the story and I, I got it a little jumbled up I think probably it's so many years ago and so many different players were in it but I got so many requests I didn't want to take it apart and say one part and another part I, so I put it together as best as I could it's a lot of years ago I think I got most of the facts right but like I said, it was a lot of years ago, and I jumped from one period to the other. And again, what motivated me is Dom Dominic Matiglio, and he was a good friend of mine too, Nino's nephew. He just died a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I got five or six texts. You grew up in the same neighborhood. Did you know him? Did this and that? Yes, I did know. And I know he passed away. He was a good man. He had a great history of legitimate things and with tough guys. One day he told me, Sammy, my uncle's got me going between Roy DeMeo and bringing, meeting with them at their club and bringing money or something back and forth and whatever. He says, I hate it. Why? He says, it's such a sick vibe over there. It's not like a regular club. You go in, you have coffee, you keep people goofing, laughing, talking. It's, it's like going to, I know, I understand. I know him well. Watch what you say there. Watch what you do. Go there. Get the money. Don't worry. They're not going to hurt you. If you have that in mind and you're starting to catch a bad vibe, they know you're Nino's nephew. He's not going to touch you. He says, I'm not worried. A lot of when I go there, a lot of times, I'm heavy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, listen, I know you're a tough guy, bro. Don't even go there heavy. They're not going to do nothing. You don't need it. They may see it one day or something and take offense to it, 
Then they might do something. Go there with nothing. Believe me, they won't do it. They know there'll be a repercussion. And they and they have no grudge against you. You go and smile, laugh, talk, grab the fucking money, and leave. And I don't blame you. But don't say this to too many people. Keep it under your hat. And Roy's got a lot of ears around. So he passed away. And I wanted to say it to the people who text me, yes, he passed away. Yes, he was a good friend of mine. I know a lot about him. A lot, a lot, most stories I know about him, but I may do them at another time. Uh, important stuff that he was involved in. But I may do it at another time. I wanted to get that out there. So you guys, adios.